Indian Ocean Conference is a forum that intends to catalyze the cooperation and collaboration among the nations of the region. We started this journey in 2016 from Singapore with the support of the governments of India, Sri Lanka and Singapore. We went to Colombo in 2017, to Hanoi in Vietnam in 2018 and to Malay in Maldives in 2020. It's a great delight that when we meet here in Abu Dhabi for the fifth conference, we are joined by a galaxy of eminences from the region and beyond. Ecology and environment in the Indian Ocean region, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, and the post-pandemic economic recovery and growth. Regional coordination and alignment will be required to address many critical challenges across these issues. As the pandemic has shown, adverse situations in one country can quickly have ramifications on the wider region. That is why the countries across the region and the world at large must work together to solve problems that affect nations, whether in terms of epidemics, economy or ecology. As we move from a just-in-time globalization to a just-in-case one, a world of more decentralized globalization obviously offers greater opportunities to many more nations. These could be accentuated by a stronger desire to foster localization and promote regionalism. Arguably, the most large-scale challenge of our times is climate change, and it is a challenge that will impact generations at every corner of the world. We have reached a precipice, a moment of choosing, and it will take commitment by all of us as we move forward with synergistic solutions at the local, state, and global levels to create a carbon-neutral world.
IOR is the least trade integrated region in the world. Diverse economic cooperation structures will require multi-layered regionalism. Without a trade agreement covering this sub-region, there can be no meaningful economic cooperation in the IOR. The collective strength of the countries around the Indian Ocean. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. We have all had extensive experience in somewhat different contexts. So I think together we can prevail. If we have a coherent strategy, if we define our objective, Considering how our economies and well-being are linked to the ocean, a strategic partnership between different actors around the world against climate fuel catastrophes is urgent. The transition from the current pandemic to endemic in the future is possible but will require a long and collective effort, nationally, regionally, and globally. All countries, including Tanzania, have been impacted by the pandemic. We have rolled out vaccination free of cost to all our citizens and the residents of the country. The Indian Ocean and South China Sea are deeply connected ecologically, economically, as well as politically. The fifth Indian Ocean Conference provides a valuable opportunity to share perspectives on emerging issues and explore ways and means to address these issues in an inclusive and constructive manner. Quad reaffirms uh, ASEAN centrality, uh, are the cooperation on COVID, on climate, new cooperation on infrastructure and cyber are all really exciting. Our strongest weapon in facing this pandemic is international partnership. We look forward to working with partners around the Indian Ocean Rim to defeat, to defeat this pandemic and to keep our community safe. Australia doesn't consider itself so much an Asia-Pacific country, which was the formulation which previously it used to use a lot, but rather an Indo-Pacific country. For us, the Indo-Pacific terminology uh, as, and concept makes more sense as a geostrategic concept. Thailand firmly believes that equitable and timely access to COVID-19 vaccines in the short term and the resumption of safe cross-border travel in the long term are the most effective strategies in mitigating the effects of COVID-19 and in achieving a sustainable economic recovery.